Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, you're going to learn about network connectivity. This means that whenever you are connected to the internet or the network, we're going to get a notification. We're going to find out when you're connected to Wi-Fi, when you're connected to the LTE or cellular, and when you're not connected to any of those things. Now, previously, before I learn about this really nice class, which is NWPath Monitor, we all used to utilize the Reachability API. And Reachability API has been used in many different frameworks to find out if you are connected to the internet or not. But after reading this amazing article from Arayman Sharda, I learned about the NWPath Monitor, and you can do the same exact thing. So I will have a link to the article in the description of the YouTube video, but let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is create a separate file. We're going to call this Network Monitor. Now, the purpose of this file or this particular class that we're going to create is to create a wrapper on top of the actual thing that we are trying to use, which in this case is the NWPath monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and create a network monitor, which is an observable object. And within the network monitor, I'm going to create a static shared property because I only want to create a single instance of this. So network monitor, there we go. And since I'm creating a single tone object, I will also make sure that the initialization is initialized or init is actually private. So you can't really use it outside. All right. Now, in order to start monitoring, we're going to go ahead and create the start function. And we can also, uh, we can create a stop function. Now, inside the start function, we need to create an instance of NW path monitor, which is the network path monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and create a private monitor, which is of type NW path monitor. You can see that it's not really coming up. That's because you need to import the network. All right. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we initialize it. So let's go ahead and initialize it. Monitor equals to NW path monitor. Once it is initialized, we have to make sure that we are running it. So if I go ahead and call the monitor dot start, you can pass in a particular dispatch queue on which you want to run this. So instead of running it on the main queue, I'm just going to go ahead and create a queue and then pass it. Once pass it, we can hook it up to our callback function. Then one of those callback function is the path update handler which is going to get fired whenever it thinks that you are changing the network. So once you're connected to the Wi-Fi, it's going to get fired. Once you're disconnected to the Wi-Fi and connect to LTE cellular, then it's going to get fired and so on. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to first see that if this is even getting fired or not. So we can go ahead and print out the value of path or we can print out the value of path or status, which is indicated that if there's any connection being made or not. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to inject this somewhere in our app. We need to initiate this. And a good place to do that would be in the network connectivity demo app file, which inherited from app. And the reason we are going to do it over here is that we need to initialize this as early as possible. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create the network monitor. We're going to go ahead and create the instance using the shared. And in the initializer, initialize or in it, we can go ahead and say network monitor dot start. All right. Now, in order to work on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run it on my actual physical phone. So let's go ahead and run QuickTime so you can actually see my phone. And there we go. So that's my phone, and you can see it. It's currently not really doing much. All right. So let's go ahead and 
make sure that we are connected to the phone. And phone is right now connected to the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and run the application. And we'll see that if it actually shows up uh, Wi-Fi. Or what does it actually print when we are displaying it or when we are trying to do that? All right. You can see sometime when I try to run it, it always comes up with this part. It's trying to still run this, busy making a device for development and all that. But once it is done, then we will resume that. All right, let's go ahead and run it again. I'm going to go ahead and run it again now. And there we go. It says hello world. That's fine. But the more interesting thing is it just says satisfied right there on the console. So if we go back to the network monitor and we're printing out the status, this is saying satisfied, which basically means that you have some sort of a status. All right. So if it is no status, meaning you're not really connected to anything, then it will be a different message. All right. So at this point, we have realized that we are connected. It is satisfied. But what should we do at this point? All right. We, we are connected. It's satisfied. That's great. But we also want to find out that what are we connected to? Are we connected to Wi-Fi or are we connected to cellular or are we connected to what? So those things you can use the NW interface and interface type. So you can always check over here if you can see that I can check over here if the uh, actual path dot user interface type and now you can check over here like are you checking for Wi-Fi? So let's go ahead and check Wi-Fi. If you are connected to Wi-Fi, all right, then we can do something over here. Uh, we can probably print a message. Uh, Wi-Fi. Else, if path dot uses interface which is cellular, then probably we can go ahead and print out cellular or LTE or whatever you want to call it. There we go. Okay, so with this approach, let's go ahead and run our app again. And I am connected to Wi-Fi, so hopefully it will print out Wi-Fi. There we go. And you can see it's printing out Wi-Fi. Now let's go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And now you can see cellular. So you can definitely see that it is changing and it is letting you know that, okay, I was Wi-Fi, but now I'm cellular. I'm again going to go ahead and change it to Wi-Fi. And now it tells us Wi-Fi. Great. So it looks like all of this is working fine. All right. Now, one of the things what we can do is instead of checking this again and again by using path dot uses interface type, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a case iterable, meaning we can just go through the cases. So I'm going to go over here and create an extension on the NW interface dot interface type. And I'm going to make sure that I am conforming to this case iterable protocol. If I just leave it like that, then obviously it's going to complain that, hey, you need to create the static property. So let's go ahead and create the static property. And now we can go ahead and assign all the other cases. So there is other, there's Wi-Fi, there is cellular, uh, there is loopback, there is also wired internet, which is my computer basically, because it's wired. All right. And once we do that, we can go back and find out that if we are connected or not. So instead of doing all of this stuff, we can simply go ahead and do a guard let interface, meaning whatever the interface you're connected to, dot interface type, dot. And now I can go through all the cases because that's the property I've created. And I can go ahead and also filter based on the actual path. So I can say path dot uses interface type dollar sign zero dot first else well else is not really much to do at this point all right now once we have the interface this will be the interface like the actual enum value which is going to indicate whether i'm connected to other wi-fi cellular loopback or wide internet i can go ahead and assign it to something and that something can be a published property so I can simply go ahead and assign it to the published property. So eventually I can go ahead and display it on the screen. So dispatch queue, 
dot main dot async and I can go ahead and say self dot current interface equals to interface. Now since I'm using self, I think it might be, and let's go ahead and use that trailing closure thing that they're talking about. But one of the things we can actually do is make sure that the self is weak so it doesn't really hold up the reference. Okay, so there we go. So now this means that anytime you are going to get a new Wi-Fi or a new connection, we are going to put it in current interface. And since this is marked as a published property, this means that we can get a notification or an event that a user interface can subscribe, our view can subscribe, and it can be displayed on the screen. All right. So let's go first of all to right here in our app because I want to pass this network monitor as a global object, meaning environment object. Now I can go back to my actual content view and I can go ahead and get access to the network monitor. Here we go. And after that, I can simply perform a switch. So let's go ahead and use a VStack. I mean, you can use anything you want, I guess, but I'm just going to use a VStack and I can say app state dot current interface. And since that is enum, I can go ahead and go through the interface. All right. So I'm going to go through all of these different cases. Uh, we are only interested in, like, say, Wi Fi and cellular. So I'm just going to go through those cases so that we can print out an image or we can display an image. And just for the fun of it, we can also go ahead and change the font size to be a little bit more bigger. So let's go with uh, 32. All right. After making these changes, we can actually go ahead and run our app on the actual device. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Right now, I'm connected to Wi Fi. So it simply displays the Wi Fi signal. That's fine. That's a Wi Fi sign. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm not connected anymore. And now it's showing us the LTE sign or the cellular sign. Now I can go ahead and do that. And now it's showing the Wi Fi sign. So definitely it's going to tell you whether you're connected to the Wi-Fi, whether you're connected to cellular. Now, uh, if you were connected to wired internet or loopback or something other, then, you know, we can, in that, in those cases, it will just print a question mark. I mean, you can write something if you want to, but for our case, it's just going to print the question mark. All right. Okay. So that's it. I hope you really like this tutorial. Now, one other thing I want to talk about is if you like this course, maybe you will be interested in, or if you like this video, maybe you'll be interested in some of my courses. I just published a brand new course on macOS programming. So definitely check that one out. If you're interested in core data, I have a course for you. I also have course on MVVM design pattern, uh, Swift UI cookbook, Rx Swift, and the list just goes on and on and on. So I have, you can see I have a lot of courses and in order to get the courses, please check out the link in the YouTube description. That way you can get the best discount. Thank you so much for your continuous support. And I really hope that you enjoy my courses.